All right. So like Jamie was saying, um, as the disease progresses, uh, the type of engagements or activities that we do is going to change. But one of the things that we want to focus on earlier in the disease is normalization. We want to keep things as normal as possible. We want to allow uh, the person to be as independent as possible. And of course, we want to allow them as much dignity as we possibly can throughout the course of the disease. So normalization means to make as normal as possible and to establish a routine. So keeping things as normal as we possibly can. So just to review a little bit as to why this is happening, what's happening, what's happening to the brain. Um, the reason that we're having changes is because of atrophy and that's where the brain actually is starting to shrink um, and the cells begin to die. And because of that, that brain's gonna go from a normal three pound brain down to about a one pound brain. Well, as that brain is having changes, that's where we're gonna see the changes in our loved one's abilities to do activities. And it's going to be very, very easy to just try to do everything for them. But that is not what we want to do because that strips a person of normalization and that strips them of independence. So throughout the course of the mild or earlier stages, uh, you're going to see them be at the developmental age from about eight to adolescent years. So starting kind of at those uh, adolescent years down to about the age of eight. Some other information just on the mild or the early stage of the disease. Um, they're going to remain independent and retain much of their cognitive functioning, but they're going to have some impairments that are gonna interfere with their daily activities. So it, as caregivers, we're gonna be the people who work around those things. We are going to accommodate the disease because they can't, they're gonna do the very best that they can, but we're actually going to accommodate the disease. But physical activity has actually been shown to improve our cognition. So we are all like that. If we will get up and get to moving, because think about what's happening. We're forcing that oxygenated blood up to the brain. So the more physical activity that any of us can have in our lives, the better it is for us. And that is not just doing jumping jacks or running around the block. It's any type of physical activity. Um, so it improves our cognitive thinking. It improves our mood, our physical fit. Oh, Holly, I accidentally muted you. Sorry. Okay. All right. Now you can hear me. Yes. I was going, how am I muted? I'm sitting here talking, doing the program. <laughs> I'm trying to admit somebody and I hit the wrong button. Sorry. That's a new one. That's a new one. Uh, so we want to focus on all the abilities and skills that the person with dementia has to maximize their independence and their dignity. So some of the things that we need to think about when we're thinking about engagements or activities are things that's going to allow them to contribute to a greater sense of well-being, that they are still being able to contribute to society. Uh, being a social support network, we want to continue to have family and friends be part of our lives. Uh, focusing on their current skills, not their prior skills. So we will have this happen sometimes. And in fact, this came up in a support group last week. Um, my husband is an artist and he has stopped painting. He has stopped drawing. Well, and of course, uh, family trying to push him to continue to do that and it wasn't something that he was comfortable continuing to do so that's where we have to meet them where they are if he's not comfortable painting anymore is he comfortable doing something else that's artistic but it might not be with the paintbrush anymore so learning to adapt because the fact that um, he's art that didn't go away he's still going to be able to do things with art but he may not be able to sit down with a canvas and paint and create with art. So kind of starting to think outside the box and then being careful with the things that we say to them as far as, but you've always loved to. You know how to do it. You've always been able to. We're using those big words like always and never, and we don't want to use those words. We're going to meet them where they are in the disease. And then recognize that environmental influences um, affect persons living with dementia as well. 
And we're actually at the very end of this, we're gonna talk about the holidays and some things that we can do to allow our loved ones to be active during the holidays. So early in the disease, they very likely are still gonna be oriented to time and person and recognize people and objects that will start to change, but early in the disease, uh, still oriented to time and to person. They're still able to travel. They may still enjoy games, hobbies, and reminiscing. So you may be able to, they may be to the point that they might not be able to do a regular set of checkers just because the checkers are small. But if you got one of those big sets of checkers that looks like it's on a rug, they sell them at Cracker Barrel, I've seen them at Target, and the checkers are that big, they can still play checkers like they've always played checkers, but they're losing some fine motor skills. So they just need bigger pieces to hold on to. Many, many games come in um, big sizes. Jenga, they have giant Jenga. They have giant Connect Four. They make giant playing cards. They make giant dominoes where they still may have the complete ability to play the game. It's the size of the pieces. Um, and you can go on Amazon and find those things uh, as well as, like I said, Target. I, I was in there this weekend and they had some, some giant games. Probably early on, they're still going to enjoy things that they have always done, and they can function normally with reminders, because again, the point in this early stage is normalization. But some things that we can start to expect, so just in case you're not familiar, and this kind of helps you tie together, oh, okay, that's part of the disease process. You're going to start seeing having some trouble finding their words. They may get e easily irritated, not only with themselves, but with others. If they're having a hard time figuring something out or understanding, they can get lost in a familiar place. Now, the attention span is going to change as well, where normally they may have been able to do something for an hour, and now we may do it for 20 minutes, take a 10-minute break, and go back and do it again for 20 minutes. But that attention span changes. Um, their hygiene is probably going to decline because think about how many steps there are involved in personal care and we start losing the ability and we start losing steps or sequencing. So that next one is skipping steps, misplacing things and having good days and bad days. So these are some losses that we can expect early on that immediate recall I just told you but that's not there anymore. But most people earlier in the disease can still read and comprehend what they read. So you might write steps down, uh, even if it's to a game, even if it is to a hobby that they're doing, you might write them down in simple sentences and have it right there where they can read it. Uh, the inability to interpret words, loss of awareness of body and position. So not realizing that I'm in your way or that I'm in your personal space. That's something that we can see pretty early on. Um, loss of ability to locate and express pain, sequencing. So that comes into whenever we're doing some type of an activity and someone maybe that has crocheted and then they stop crocheting because they're just forgetting the step. But at this stage of the disease, if you show them, if you remind them, or if you sit directly beside them or across from them and you do the activity with them, <clears throat> excuse me, many times they will mirror what you are doing, because they are still able to look at and see what you're doing, process that, and then do it themselves. So that allows them to keep that normalization and that independence, and it's just by you mirroring what it is you're wanting them to do, whether this is playing a game, doing some type of art, doing a hobby they've always done. And again, we're not saying things like, you know how to do this, you've been doing this for you. We don't wanna say those words. Um, initiation is also one of those things that we can expect to lose. So they may not initiate the activity, they may not initiate the engagement, but if you will initiate it, sometimes more than once, then they'll go ahead, or if you just start doing it, and then they'll start doing it with you. Um, they may not be able to make their needs known, and they may need some assistance with problem solving. But here are some preserved abilities early in the disease. Um, those long ago memories, and we can pull from those long ago memories to create activities for our loved ones. Confabulation stays, so uh, we're able to confabulate stories or uh, tell stories that maybe that's not exactly how it happened, which is okay, as long as we're still able to have that conversation and that banter back and forth. 
emotional memories are preserved, gross motor skills are preserved. So the use of our arms and legs and our gross motor skills, um, being able to understand facial expression, tone and gestures, that's gonna stay with us all the way through to the end of life because that is, comes from the amygdala and the amygdala we know remains intact throughout the course of the disease. And then forbidden words, swearing, sex talk, those type things also stay intact because of where those are stored in the brain. So sometimes the very things we wish would go away are the things that stay, unfortunately. So if you do start to hear those words, um, there's a reason that you're hearing them. They're trying to make a need known. There's an unmet need that we've got to figure out what it is. So some more preserved um, abilities They'll thrive with routine and structure. So if you can get a routine down, the earlier, the better. Thrive on that. And in fact, sometimes that can become something that they really look forward to is that routine. Um, I know when we had people come into the day program, uh, lots of times families would, you know, you're going to work or you're going to the senior center or whatever it was that they were going to. And on the days they didn't go, they get very upset because that was part of their routine. I need to get up. I need to go. This is what we're going to do today. They should still be able to follow a two to three step direction or command, uh, being able to read and follow instructions. Now, do keep this in mind, though. The ability to read is going to last longer than the ability to comprehend. So there will come a time that they'll be able to read the words, but they're not going to comprehend what it is that they're reading. Um, they can still recognize errors or that they've made a mistake. Social skills stay intact for a very long time. That ability to have that banter back and forth, that ability to read. Um, it was really cold outside this morning, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was cold outside. What'd you think about that football game? Those Cowboys or something? Because look what I'm doing. I'm giving you the answer. They're not doing well, are they? Nope, they're not doing well. And so they'll keep that ability for a long time. Um, and it tends to plainly seem task or task that uh, they're aware that it's right there in front of them and they need to do that. So staying socially active is really important. Involving friends, going out, having get togethers as much as we can right now, we can still do this and stay socially distanced. Um, there are some adult day programs that are still open. Ours is not open right now, but there are some that are still open. This is a great place for people to remain social. There's also something that's called reminiscence therapy. It's that second bullet point that you can see there. It's a treatment that uses all of the senses, sight, touch, taste, smell, and sound to help individuals with dementia remember events, people, and places from their past lives. As part of the therapy, care partners can use objects and various activities to help individuals with recall of memories. And there's actually some things that you can do to help with reminiscence therapy. And one of them is the third bullet point, and it's called My House of Memories. And it's an app on the phone. It's a free app. And it has hundreds of pages of images that are meant to evoke events from the lives of people with dementia. So it is pictures from different things in different decades. Um, there are also, you can go on Amazon, you can go on a website called S and S Worldwide, and you can order what's called reminiscence cards. And it's actually five by seven or four by six cards. And it may be things like, I've got some right here. I don't know that you're gonna be able to see see them. Nope, you're not. Uh, like this one has Howdy Doody on it. So it has a picture of Howdy Doody, which you could then look at together and go, now what in the world is that? And it may trigger some memories. Um, I love Lucy. There's a picture of Lucy on one of these. There's a picture of a dial telephone. Uh, and if you're very young, you may be going, what is she talking about? But it's got things in there that trigger memories, and they are great things to do with your loved ones to create conversations back and forth. Those are also actually really good gifts. So some more strategies using sensory stimulation, things like music. Uh, music, again, is one of those that's going to be throughout the course of the disease because 
music is part of that right side of the brain. Rhythm is located there. So we want to use their music, not our own personal music, but their music. Art, light, even a white noise. Uh, you can get sound machines or you can get a white noise machine that just keeps a um, kind of a sound in the background so that you're not picking up, up on lots of other sounds. Anything that has repetition, folding clothes, uh, sorting coins, putting coins in a holder, separating nuts and bolts, maybe into baby food jars or buttons, anything that has to do with sorting. Change of environment, so environmental changes, getting out and going for a ride. And especially right now, that is a great thing to do. I did that this weekend, the colors are changing. And I live in Johnson County and there are some great two lane back roads, go through the Sonic, get you a cherry limeade or get a milkshake and go out and look at all the colors changing. That's a great ride. Um, watching children play ball, watching children online. You can go to YouTube and pull up videos of children playing. Uh, TV shows like America's Funniest Home Videos, which now you can go and you can get on Hulu and you can watch all 20 something seasons of it that has lots of pets and lots of children on it. And it's just something enjoyable to do. And that brings laughter for both of you. Um, sitting in a park, we may not be going to the movies right now, but getting some movies, especially from their past that they might be interested in watching, even if it's not sitting and watching it for two hours straight. It may be watching it for 30 minutes, taking a break and coming back and watching it for another 30 minutes. I've got on here walk around a museum, but most all of the museums now are doing virtual museum tours. In fact, if you type in virtual museum tours, you can see for free many, many museums across the United States right now, and gardens. We put in um, botanical gardens, uh, virtual tours. That's something that you can do as well. You're still going to want them to help out in the house, but you're just going to want to simplify the task. So um, you may have to label the uh, cabinets in the kitchen so that they can still unload the dishwasher and put things away, but you label it so that they know where to put the items. Contributing to their greater sense of worth, which is where you're, they're doing something which you're then going to maybe donate. You might sit and make some tie blankets. You can get these tie blankets at uh, Joann's, at Michael's, and you sit and you just tie them together and then you donate them to a nursery or you donate them to churches, churches that have nurseries or churches that have um, programs for children. Taking food to an animal shelter, taking food to uh, food banks right now, helping sort clothes at clothes closets, those types of things. Um, I know we used to take our early stage group over to a clothes closet here in town at a church because they could sort clothes. All day long they could sort clothes and then they were helping other people with that. So some more strategies before you get started on anything, you want to set out all the tasks that you need before you get started because the last thing you want to do is to have to walk away and go get something because you may lose their attention during that time. So have everything out, making sure you're using those visual cues, limiting their new learning. This wouldn't be the time to say, we're going to learn a new skill because that's not going to happen. We're gonna tap into some old skills. And drawing on that procedural memory, their past experiences, things that we know they know how to do from the past, um, staying consistent, use, uh, avoid open-ended questions. What would you like to do today? Nothing. You give two choices. Would you like to A or B and give those two choices? Um, not interrupting and of course going with the flow. So here's some ideas and we're actually going to send you when we send you these slides, we've got a list. It's called 103 things uh, to do with people with dementia. Now, all of those on there are not gonna work for you because of where your loved one is in the uh, journey of the disease, but you may be able to take one of them and modify it to work for you. But here are some things that you might can do earlier in the disease. And we've mentioned some of these already. Uh, being able to get out in a garden, going out this time of year, you can still have a winter garden. You can do lettuce and cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli. I planted all of those this weekend. You can get, get out and have that raised garden bed. And that's something to get out and dig in the dirt. And then there's a reason to be doing that. 
Um, simple crafts. There are tons and tons and tons of really easy Christmas ornaments that you can do together. Again, Hobby Lobby and Michaels sell those. Walmart even has some. And it is some easy Christmas ornaments that you could make together to then give to other people or to donate. Anything that has to do with sorting, doing Bible studies. If they've always been interested in a Bible study, do a Bible study. Allow them to read those passages. You'll be shocked and surprised, very likely, at a lot of the stuff that is retained because it is something that is just part of them if you will do a Bible study with your loved one. Cooking, would you change the steps a little bit? You make sure you have all of everything that you need out before you get started to absolutely still allow them to be part of the process. Doing housework, that's something that we've all done for a very, very long time. Allow them to help with the housework. Um, some other examples is anything and everything that has to do with pets. So if you've got pets, absolutely still allow them to take care of the pets. You just want to, you may go along later and make sure that they were fed or that that kitty litter was changed, that type of thing. Um, again, playing with children, anything to do with children, things that have to do with art. They make a um, modeling clay and there's a modeling sand. It's actually, there's a therapeutic sand that you can get to run your hands through and you put it in something like a shoe box. I use that a lot in the day program, whenever our day program was open. Again, they sell those at all the arts and crafts type stores. You can do some real interesting things with it. You can create little sand bottles, um, lots and lots of fun things that you can do that you can get really creative and please just try it because I would have people all the time go, I never thought my dad would be interested in and then look what he made today. Um, again, using music, cooking, taking walks and creating a collage. This time of year is a great time to do that with the um, leaves falling and you can come back and create a collage. Oh, touch was on there. And like we said, we're gonna be doing our um, Compassionate Touch program tomorrow about using scented oils and lotions. Physical activity we've talked about, walking the dog, dancing, gardening, that type of thing. And you see there, many studies suggest that physical activity positively affects cognitive function is all in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So you can do something as simple as uh, a repetition, like the sorting and the separating, or you can do something and you can get it as complicated as they're comfortable doing at this point. Routine is very important, and I'm going to hurry along here because we're about out of time. I want to make sure and get to the holiday stuff, but you're going to get a copy of all of these slides. Uh, I did put something in here on communication, but I did want to get to these with the holidays because we do have the holidays coming up. Things that your loved one can do throughout the holidays that are at the um, earlier stages in the disease. Let them decorate the house. It doesn't matter if all of the ornaments are hanging right here in a 12 by 12 section, you can go back and rearrange those ornaments later. Let them hang the ornaments on the tree. Uh, let them help decorate. It's real easy for us to say, I've got it. Let me do it. You go sit over there. You watch me do it. We need to include them. Normalization. Setting the table. Help with the holiday cards. Get them a big batch of Christmas cards and let them write Christmas cards out. Early in the disease, they can very likely still write a Christmas card. And we accommodate that as the disease progresses where maybe later they're putting stickers on the envelope of the Christmas cards, but they're still being able to participate. Helping in the kitchen. And again, that's one of those where we wanna go, mom, no, 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 I've got it. You go sit down, you rest. They want to participate, allow them to participate. Even if it's you going ahead and mixing it and just give them the bowl and let them sit there and stir, but let them participate. Christmas carols. Again, that's the music and Christmas music is our long-term memory. So again, I have watched people who are getting to the point that they aren't even very verbal anymore, but you put on some familiar Christmas music and there are the words. I've, I've got video of people that's just shocking. There are the words where the words come back because they are there, Christmas music. A holiday movie, especially an old holiday movie attending a religious service. And if you can't get out and go to church for a Christmas service, there are plenty of them that you can find online. Putting bows on gifts, helping to wrap gifts. That's something that someone can, or put, now a lot of people use bags. 
or you put the gift in the bag and let them put the tissue paper in so that they're doing it with you. It might not go as fast as you would normally do it, but it's a great engagement to do together. Going for walks, going for rides as the Christmas lights are coming up, reminiscing about childhood um, holidays and gifts they may have received uh, and talking about uh, Christmas when they were young or when they were a child. Other activities to do, continue to do your regular traditions, but just modify them so that your loved one can still be a part of that. Focus on their strengths, don't focus on what's been lost and allow them to continue to help. Um, again, reminiscing about holidays from the past and reminisce about the food, the people, the gifts, everything about it, the sounds, the smells, that's using all of the senses to reminisce. That's part of that reminiscence uh, therapy. Whoo, right on time, right at 1131. Thank you all so much for being here. Let me stop sharing the screen and see if anybody had any questions. Like I said, we're, we will send you this recording. We'll also send you the slides. Plus we're gonna send an additional uh, paper that says 103 things to do with someone with dementia. And it will be one that you can use throughout the course of this series. Um, next week we'll be doing activities for the middle stage and then we'll be doing activities for the late stage. And so many of these you can continue to do you just change it as the disease changes. We change the activity or the engagement. Did anybody have anything, Jamie? Did you have anything you wanted to jump in or add? No, you covered it very well. Just, um, I mean, don't assume what they can or can't do, right? Um, just give it a try. Yep. You try, and, and I think that is one of the biggest things is trying something that they made. Again, I never thought that my dad would want to do tie blankets to take up to the church nursery. And then they did it and they're so proud of them. So just try it, try some different things. All right, well, thank you everybody. We appreciate you being here and hope to see you again soon at either one of our support groups or our education programs. We'll get this sent out to you later. Bye-bye.